disjunctive syllogism, a rule of inference. Either P or Q, not P, so Q. Like all rules of inference, this is composed of premises and the conclusion they entail. Disjunctive syllogism is the rule of having a choice between two things and having one of those choices blocked off. Either this or that, well, not this one, so that one. Let's put in A and B for P and Q. That'll give us an output of either A or B, not A, so B. Perhaps a longer sentence will be a little bit more instructive. Let's put in a negation, not A, for P. And then let's put in if B, then either C or D for Q. We get that as the output. Let's take a look at what we actually mean here. First of all, notice the V and the not are still our main operators. No matter how many extra operators get added in, those are the main ones. Note the double negation. Note the double ne negation here. Not A is subbed in for P. Instead of taking that negation away, we've just added one so that it matches the rule form exactly. Not A is in for P in the first and second lines. Well, this sentence is in for Q in both the first premise and it becomes our conclusion since we found out that not A was negated. Disjunctive syllogism always has one disjunction and one negation as the main operators. It never applies to lines without that exact combination. As a rule of inference, it applies only to whole lines and only in one direction. It always cites one disjunction and the negation of one of the disjuncts. Then it results in the other disjunct. Here's a simple translation to help you think about it. Remember, no baseball games end in ties, except the All-Star game. The Mets win, P. The Yankees win, Q. Either the Mets or Yankees will win their game tonight. The Mets don't win. So, the Yankees win. We can also prove this with a joint truth table, and you can see that this is a valid argument. First, we'll highlight the only row with all true premises, row 3, as that's the only place that P or Q is true, and not P is also true. And we'll see quickly that the conclusion Q must be true in that row. This rule is going to work every time. The truth tables just showed us it's valid. Let's see how we might go ahead and use it in a proof. Either P or Q. If Q then R and not P, therefore R. Well, it's hidden in this conjunction, but we've got a disjunction and the negation of one of the disjuncts. We just need to make sure to do simplification first. We'll need both of these later on in the proof, so we'll go ahead and simplify both sides of line 2. That will allow us to get Q through disjunctive syllogism. And then we'll use line 4 to get R through a modus ponens. And that's that. How about a more complicated version, though? Either not P or Q and R. P and either R or S. Therefore, S. With those two disjunctions, we're going to be doing a couple of disjunctive syllogisms. First, let's simplify out line two. We'll get P and either not R or S. Now we'll use double negation on P so that it will match exactly the form of disjunctive syllogism. That will allow us to run the rule on lines one and five, and we'll get Q and R. Notice that we've negated not P. We've used that double negation. Regular P, line three, we did not cite. It doesn't help us. Now we can get R through simplification, and we're going to use double negation on R as well, and that will get us S. Again, I can't stress this enough because students skip it so often. Don't forget to do your double negations when you need to use disjunctive syllogism to get rid of a negated disjunct. There's a few different kinds of errors that are pretty common with this rule. First is a partial line citation. You might be really tempted to do this, and I'm pretty sure it follows, but it's not how the rule works. If P, then either Q or R, not R. Therefore, 
if P then Q. This is an inference that you should be able to make, but you're going to need quite a few more steps, simply because disjunctive syllogism is not set up to work on partial lines. These rules are made to be as general as they can, and it's not going to work on every partial line. For that reason, it doesn't work on any. You need to have OR as the main operator to use this rule. Something like this would be even farther from correct. If P, then Q or R, not R, so Q. This disjunction still depends on the conditional. We need to find out whether or not P is true before we can do something like this. And here's our common error and what it looks like. Either not P or Q, or P, so Q. Remember that logic is really all about spelling out every step you do so that you can see even the simplest steps that you always skip over in your head, so that you can program a computer, so that you can argue with someone who doesn't trust you even a little bit. Yes, P and not P are opposites. You know it and I know it. P and not not P are logical equivalents. You still need to use double negation. Disjunctive syllogism requires a negated line to work, and that's just how the rule works. Getting out of the habit of using double negation, i found, often leads students to other errors involving negation. Here's another common one that shouldn't be so common. Either not P or not Q. Not P, oh, therefore not Q. Not P does not negate not P. You would need some kind of double negation, or really, you need just an entirely different set of premises, because this isn't valid at all. Students usually get disjunctive syllogism right without too many problems until negations start getting involved and proofs get pretty long. I think steps get overlooked in haste, so if you're going to use this rule, step back and go slowly. It's a really common rule, and it's a way that human beings really think all the time. So think slowly when you use it.